what's going on guys it's gbpb it's gbp baby welcome back to another video and what an interesting day we've had now after all the hype i had earlier on in the week um i was caught off guard with this interesting price action that we witnessed on dollar um and it does look like we're going to close below this mean threshold that i wanted to see get respected so what happened this is at least we can use this to an analyze and understand what do we do when the pdra we want to be respected get disrespected well, not going to lie, if we do close below this mean threshold, I'd then, and I'd then anticipate this mean threshold to provide resistance. And what do I mean by that? I mean that if we now trade back up to that um, mean threshold, I think that it will <clears throat> I think that it will be used to propel price lower. And in terms of lowered PDRAs, remember, we do have non-farm payroll tomorrow and this week's already been an absolute state. So like probability is off the charts pretty much. But generally speaking, we have this um, volume imbalance, this real liquidity void right here. A liquidity void is where there's no trading. So no trading has occurred here at all, not even wicks. So in terms of downside delivery, if price is going to continue lower, this is where we're going to be drawing to. So I now have my eye set on this level here. And like I said, the mean threshold, which is on the four hour, but now we can also look at the, we'll look at the daily one actually. So there's a daily mean threshold right here. If we are to continue bearish, then this daily threshold should now act as resistance. And like I said, it should be using these PD arrays in the exact opposite of how I anticipate it to get used. So anyway, here we are on the four hour. You can see we traded higher. We ran out stops here and here. We failed to take out the relative equal highs, which I wanted to see get taken. If you recall, I was saying I wanted to see that get taken. You see, we failed to do that and price turned around and started trading aggressively lower. Now you can see, again, we're getting very, we're edging very close to this low. And like I said, if, the, if we do if we are to continue lower, it's likely we're going to trade into this real liquidity void. We do have a swing low down here that price will likely draw to as well. And like I said, with non-farm payroll, it will, you know, it's we can anticipate this happening during the New York session tomorrow. But yeah, what what can I really say? Well, like I said, with this kind of bearish behavior and momentum as well, I wouldn't be surprised if we just retraced higher, found resistance at the mean threshold, and then price continued lower into like a, the liquidity void that we have here. Other than that, um, it'd be nice if price could reverse, but I doubt it's going to do that again. This kind of back and forth price action, I haven't seen anything like this before. So again, it, this is environments when we're all learning. And it's all a bit of a mess right now, but hopefully next week we can come back a lot stronger with a, with a much more stronger bias as to what's going on because I haven't seen or I did not anticipate such um, a drastic turnaround and reversal in the market. So yeah, all we can do is wait, really. You can see we're still just um, kind of consolidating around that daily consequent encroachment. And like I said, the fact that we're still respecting it is interesting to me. Um, but like I said, it's just a matter of us waiting to see how we treat that in the new day. So what do I have my eyes set on? It'll definitely be this mean threshold. And then, of course, if, if like I said, this mean threshold does provide the resistance I anticipate it to, then we will start using this liquidity void as a target for price. So pretty simple over there. Let's go down to GBP. You can see GBP obviously used that um, fall on dollar to trade aggressively higher again unexpectedly as that's not what I anticipated from yesterday's video. And again, mean thresholds, mean thresholds, mean thresholds, mean thresholds. I'm going to keep talking about mean thresholds because again, depending on what side and how we close around them, they should be used as support and resistance. So here is the mean threshold of yesterday, so Wednesday, and we can draw that out like so. We'll make it orange and now the fact that we traded through that and we've closed above it if price comes back down to it i now expect it to act to find support if we traded to it and found resistance at it then i'd expect it to act as resistance but we've but we've closed we've traded through it took out yesterday's high and closed above it so when price comes back down there i want it to provide support now so, now. so we can use that to move into the new day and like i said we can start to target potential buy side liquidity pools for us to trade into so it's crazy how my bias can change so suddenly like that. But like I said, when you have unexpected moves like this, um, as I was saying in yesterday's video, it's just like chess. You just have to, what is the most probable, what is the most probable move and where is price trying to draw to? So that's what we're going to continue to do. Here's the four hour. We actually do have breaker form, a breaker formed, low, high, low, low, and we moved higher. So this down close candle, this up close candle before that down move is a breaker. And you'll see that lines up nicely with that consequent encroachment I was talking about. So what we can do is we can draw the volume off that block out like so and again if price does manage to trade down back into that we'd like to see if it provides support now like i said after today 
if it doesn't provide support and it just continues lower, so be it. But to be honest, I'm going to be staying out the charts completely tomorrow, especially with non-farm payroll. But based off this price action, this area should now provide support for us to start looking for longs to run into that buy side liquidity pool up here, these relative equal highs. This pink box I have up here is actually a daily, a daily fair value gap up here, which hasn't been completely filled. We traded to it here, but um, it can still be traded to. So again, price may even want to reach up there depending on how bullish we are. Let's drop down to the 15 minute and have a closer look. So you can see we came down, took out sell stops residing below here, sell side liquidity, beautifully. And then you can see how price traded higher aggressively, breaking market structure. Where is the breaking market structure? Right here. So that's break of structure. You see all this in my back testing videos, guys. And then you can see price came back down, offering optimal entry into a value gap before aggressively trading higher. So again, I'm looking at the breaker, which again was this level, wasn't it, on the four hour? Remember, the high time frame always beats lower time frame. So I'm looking at this area to potentially offer buys. We could come down into this swing high because this is a significant swing high. So we'll get that level marked out as well. However, once price gets into here, I'm going to be seeing, okay, does price show willingness to want to go higher? And then we can, um, like I said, potentially look for buys for a run up into this buy side liquidity, if that's what price wants to do. Because the way this, these markets are moving right now is absolutely disgusting. So yeah, let's move on to Euro to finish off. I was just doing some back testing on Euro. Um, so make sure to go watch my back testing videos. But let's go into the daily and we can have a look. So pound, dollar, right. Mm, that's interesting. <laughs> I just realized we finally traded down into this bullish order block on Euro. I had my eyes set on this bullish order block for a while. If you've been watching my videos, you'd know. But I didn't actually mention it um, recently. Anyway, we have some relative equal highs here. This high, this high, and this high. So we have these relative equal highs for buy side liquidity. Um, and then uh, we also have this massive daily imbalance that may want to get traded to. Um, depending on euro so I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw out this buy side and I am gonna bring our attention to this swing high as well in terms of the low of tomorrow um, again assuming we are bullish now on euro we do have a breaker low high low low where's the last up close candle right here on the four hour now we don't want to use the entire range do we but we can draw out this four hour like so and we know that when price comes back into this range, we can start to look for buys. So where where specifically in this range? Well, we have an inversion, fair value gap, don't we? We have one here, delivered on upside, downside, upside. So if price does manage to reach this, which is the midpoint of this order block? Hopefully you guys can see, okay. This is quite complicated, let me just show you. So you see the midpoint, that lines up perfectly with that. So if price does manage to offer us an entry down here, we can start looking for longs on on euro sorry with an expectation from for the buy side liquidity up here potentially reaching into this order block here and oh would you look at that a nice little imbalance residing right there on the four hour let's get that marked out and make that a lovely blue as this may be a nice target for us but like i said non-farm payroll guys this week's been crazy <laughs> this and oh okay this pink level as well is where that order block i was talking about in previous videos is as well so that's interesting so again price might want to pull back down into that and find support at it now it doesn't need to come all the way down into there but um this range most definitely we should be looking at again if you grade it you can start to see where we're likely to find support it might even only trade to the 25 percent level which is fine what we'll simply be doing is waiting for the time of day so maybe 8 30 or london and then we wait for a reaction and then we'll simply get in on the breaker and then we can go long it's as simple as that i make it sound simple it's not as simple as that but that's what I'm looking at. So I hope that made sense. Um, like I said, very interesting day. Nothing to be too afraid of. Um, we keep stepping forward. And what I am going to do is I am going to draw the midpoint out of this. Well, it lines up with this. Again, watch this pink level. Keep an eye on this pink level in the new day and see how price treats it um, or how close we even get to it. Remember, we do have this massive four-hour up-close candle. So that's what these lines are delineating. Let's make them a little bit thicker. So we want to see how price is acting once it gets into this range and we want to see is it going to offer us um, any opportunity for some longs into the buy side and remember this fair value gap and like i said it is non-farm payroll tomorrow so we can expect a lot of price action um if we do push aggressively higher up into this fair value gap um it's simple we just we're pretty much bullish on pairs and then we can start looking for longs to even reach up into here 
maybe next week so that's going to be everything guys i hope you found this insightful and don't forget to smash the subscribe button and i'll catch you on sunday peace